being an adult for a decade has taught me so many important life lessons. Keep your expectations low. She looks like Meg the Stallion in those jeans. But when they come off, she's probably going to look like Squidward. Tough. Tough. Keep your expectations low. And when it came to Power Rangers Dino Fury, I did that. Particularly with Zed coming back. I knew it was going to be a one episode appearance. To boost the ratings. And then right back to the life lessons. And God damn it. Hate to tell y'all this. But I love to tell y'all this. I was right. How you for nigga? Stop it. I was born in the tropics. I'm the way people mosh pit. And they came with a starship. Yeah. yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, I'm really from the tropics. Fuck is you doing the next? What's good, Digital Trial Squad? Y'all know what it is to check it, right? All right, y'all, look. Long overdue. Long overdue. But when we do see Lord Zed again and Dino Fury, the man is swole, swole. He looking like The Rock. And I ain't talking about the one we grew up with. I'm talking about the one now. He looks like he's had some of that bang venom from Batman and Robin. This motherfucker is juicing. He is huge. I'm on steroids, now what? Even the way he actually entered the Area 62 base was very impressive to me because he came through with so much ferocity, intimidation, and automatically commanded respect, right? And even was getting ready to boss up on Void Knight. And in that moment, I'm like, all right, cool. The writers actually respect Lord Zed. They actually respect his history and how he came into the room through intimidation, both fearfully and physically. Look at me being all positive. I got to compliment the suit because it's way more flexible in this particular iteration, right? Hell, even the Z ornament on his head is flexible. When that motherfucker took the cloak off, that thing said, boing. <laughs> That motherfucker was moving like he was on a pogo stick. Tough. That shit was flexible as hell. But you could tell that the material they have to work with on these shows. The actors are more comfortable in these suits. So he was moving real spry. Because my man back in the 90s put some miles on that throne. Nigga, he put some miles on that throne. Now, I was afraid them rocks was getting ready to disintegrate on his ass. He put some miles on that throne. But I loved Zed in the beginning of this episode. No negative thoughts, just positive energy. The story, the plot reason for having Lord Zed back had to make sense. We already had such bad history as fans of Power Rangers with other people coming back and it making no sense whatsoever. We already have a bad history. So if it didn't make sense, I was going to act a fucking fool. But it actually makes sense. There's a villain named Regal who has the ability to reanimate any being he wants from any time or place. He chooses Lord Zed at his most evil, his most vile moment, right? It makes sense for his appearance to change. All of that was cool. Even with the fact that they put a compliance collar on him made sense because Zed isn't going to be taking orders from somebody looking like a goddamn Egyptian pyramid. <laughs> he ain't doing that. So all those things early on, I was like, okay, it makes sense. This is not so bad. My man's Regal though is definitely overpowered. That is some overpowered shit. You might as well give him the infinity gullet with all the infinity stones, a master morpher, the Egyptian God cards, <laughs> Exodia. <laughs> The Big Ten Omnitrix, <laughs> all of the talismans from Jackie Chan Adventures. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I don't know why I mentioned that, but I mentioned that. <laughs> you might as well give him the Phoenix Force from X-Men and, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, the, the Nine Tails <laughs> from Naruto. <laughs> that motherfucker is OP as hell. But I did pick up on another thing about it, right, is the fact that a time-displaced 
Lord Zed was a creative avenue to kind of take bringing him back to the show. And although when you really start thinking about it, you're like, didn't that create a time operation and didn't that fuck up the timeline? No, 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 no. I'm with you. I am with you. That does fuck up the timeline. But I'm going to tell you something. Come on. Come on in a little bit closer. Don't be shy. I took a bath. Come on in. Look. It's Power Rangers, nigga. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> so all of your theories where you're writing on the wall. <sighs> okay, time operation. <sighs> Jordan away, took him out. Jordan go back in time, all that shit. No, it's Power Rangers. They don't give a fuck, okay? But the explanation, him being time misplaced, I thought was cool. My biggest gripe with Lord Zed in episode 14 of Dino Fury has nothing to do with how he came here. It's why he's here. Basically, Regal just wants to exchange the Rangers to Void Knight for Sporax Beast. We know a big part of this season has to do with Sporax Beast and capturing them all. Come on, I gotta catch them, it's you and me. It's a simple plot, it is what it is. But... When things play out towards the back end of the episode, I'm like, fuck, you bought Lord Zed back so he could throw sleepy cuffs, sleepy cuffs on the Rangers and put them to sleep. So he doesn't even really get an opportunity to really fight them. And get this, he puts Zato, Javi, Izzy, and Amelia in a sleeper position. So he basically has a 1v1 in a way with Ollie. <sighs> Y'all really just bought this man back. So he can have a one-on-one, -on -one, a moment with the most uninteresting character on this Ranger team. Really? So you're not going to have him battle Zato. How dope would it have been to have Lord Zed, the most iconic PR villain, battle the first ever Red Ranger Zato? How dope would that have been? That would have been poetic. You don't give him that one-on-one -on -one versus Zed. You don't have Zato getting ready to lay down a sacrifice to save his team and then so on teleports him out of there when he's getting ready to die. It ain't got to be three or four minutes like a traditional comic book show. It could be a minute and some change. Zed got jumped at the ear, and he was so bitchified. And I get it. He didn't have the Z staff, right? So part of his power was missing. But still, this is Lord Zed, bruh. This is the most iconic PR villain. He deserved a better send-off than that. Was shameful. Shameful. Lord Zed deserves a better scent off the net. This is some shameful shit. Shameful. Shameful. But again, the way it began was great. The way it ended was so disappointing. At least they walked us through the history of Lord Zed a little bit and showing how mighty he was. But if you're going to send him off like a bitch, you would have been better off going to go get an actual bitch. Go get Rito. <laughs> because Rito's still alive somewhere out there in the cosmos. Go get his bitch ass. Because in Turbo, he was walking around in a nanny costume. Nigga. It, nigga. It's 2021. And the joke I want to crack, I really can't crack. <laughs> It is what it is. <laughs> FTV. Fade the black nigga.